Okay, everybody, it is time for another video. And with this video, I think it'd be good to start with uh, taking stock of where we left off in the last one. Okay, so let's say that we have, we always start with some kind of data, uh, numbers or something. And this time it says that we have SAT or reading scores that are normally distributed. Okay, now in order for me to do anything with a normal distribution, I, I need three things. The first of which is to know that it's normally distributed. And then I need to know the mean and the standard deviation. So that's all given, okay? And those three things together tell me how the scores are distributed. I mean, it's called a distribution. In this case, it's a normal distribution. There are lots of other kinds of distributions too. So these three things together tell me how the scores are distributed. And when I look at this bell curve, it looks like most of the scores are going to be between like 400 and 650, roughly. Okay. Uh, and the reason that I come to that conclusion is because the area under the curve, you know, between one number and another is the same thing as the probability that those numbers will happen. Okay. So, you know, if I have this question, what percent of the SAT verbal scores are less than 675? Well, you know, I can see where 675 is on here. And if I could find the area under this curve up to 675, then that would be the percentage or the odds, you know, of a randomly chosen score being less than 675, okay? So it'd be the, the percent of the total scores that are less than 675. If I were to choose a random person, it would that would be the same thing as the odds that their score was less than 675. So that's that's what this graph tells me, all right, with it being a distribution. Uh, now, I mean, if I was going to you know, give you a precise answer to this, um, then I would need uh, some kind of calculator that could do normal distribution calculations for me, okay? So we have StatCrunch, and I've made many videos on how to use StatCrunch to do different things. And, and here's a graph that I produced with StatCrunch, okay? Uh, I wanted to figure out, like, okay, like 675 is right here. What is the area under this curve all the way, you know, from the left up to 675, okay? Uh, so StatCrunch will do that for me, and it gave me this number, 0 0.93376, so on, okay? All right, so, so that means that the area under the curve is 0 0.93376. Uh, another way of saying that is 93.37% of the curve is right there in red, and given that you know, the interpretation here was SAT scores, and that turns out to mean about 93.37% of the students have scores less than 675, okay? All right, now, I, so that's sort of where we've been in, in one example, but I want you to notice two things. Like, we have the normal distribution, but beyond that, there's a certain point on the horizontal axis and then an area under the curve associated with that. So those are two different things. And I guess this could go either way. If I knew the area, then I guess I could find this number here. And if I have this number here, then I can find the area because they're tied together. So it, it makes sense if you had one, you could find the other because they're linked. All right. Now, so far, like, we, all of the questions that we've done have been based on having this number and then figuring out the area. And so far, we've used StatCrunch to do that. I've given you some examples, okay? But maybe let's go the other way, okay? Uh, so here's a, the kind of example that you'll see next in the assignments. Uh, it says, find the z-score that corresponds to a cumulative area of 0 0.75. Well, so here's the way to think about that. Um, it's like the last question, but in reverse. 
where I say, suppose that this area right here is 93.37% of the curve, then what's this number right here, okay? Now, with the terminology being z-score, it means we're referring to the standard normal curve. Now, the standard normal distribution is the normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, okay? So when I'm asked for the z-score that corresponds to a cumulative area of 0 0.75, well, 0 0.75 is the area, all right? So if I, if I say, all right, from all the way to the left up to here, suppose that's 0 0.75, then what's this number right here on the horizontal axis, okay? Well, so let's talk about how to figure that out. So I would go to StatCrunch, and I'll go to Calculators, and then Normal, okay? So now what comes up by default is the standard normal distribution as a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Now that question was saying like, well, where, where's this number on the horizontal axis where 75% of the area would lie. So for me to figure that out, I, I put in the area and I ask it to compute the point. So there it is, all right? So it says the probability that X, which is this number on the horizontal axis, is less than 0 0.674 is 0 0.75. So that says like, well, if this is 75% of the area, if this area is 0 0.75, then that mark right there that we go up to on the horizontal axis is 0 0.674. So I got my answer, 0 0.674, all right? So, all right, so that'd be right here, 0 0.674, right where that the red shaded part of the curve ends. Okay. Uh, now let's do one here. Now this one, uh, th there was no data. It didn't tell me what these numbers were or anything like that. But I, I just wanted you to see one example without any anything extra where you see that if I have the area, I can find the number on the horizontal axis. Okay. All right. So let's, let's do something with a little bit different spin on it. So in the survey of women, the mean height was 64.4 inches and the standard deviation was 2.74 inches. What height represents the 95th percentile? Okay, so 95th percentile, that means that uh, it's the height such that 95% of the other heights in the population are less than that, okay? So, so you could say like if, if we were the 95th percentile, 95% of the data would be under us and 5% would be above us, you know, to make 100%. Uh, so, I mean, to ask like what height represents the 95th percentile is, well, what's that number right there, see? So here are all the heights, okay? And the mean was 64.4. So that's like right here in the middle of the curve, right at the peak, okay? All right. And there's this number, it looks like it might be 68 or, oh, sorry, 69 or so that is the 95th percentile, right? 95% of the curve is to its left or under it, all right? So how would we figure that out? Well, it'd be like the last example. I, I pull up a normal distribution that has a mean of 64.4 and a standard deviation of 2.74, and I try to find this point on the horizontal axis that has 95% of the curve uh, to his left. All right, so let's try that. So what was it? Mean of 64.4, uh-oh, crunch down my, there we go. So mean uh, 64.4 and standard deviation, I already forgot, uh, 2.74. So 2.74. All right, so then here's that curve that I had on my uh, slide already. Now, I want to know the 95th percentile, and so that would be like this, all right? Now, the way I would read this statement down here at the bottom is it says, the probability that a random person's height is less than or equal to 68.9 inches is 95%. Okay, 
So yes, if um, a certain height is in the 95th percentile, that means that uh, just by random choice, the odds that somebody's height is less than that is 95%. Okay, if 95% of the numbers are under that. So that, that height that's the 95th percentile would be 68.9 inches. Okay, all right. So we can answer like 68.9 inches. All right, that's our 95th percentile number, okay? Just like you see here, there's that number there on the horizontal axis, 95% of the curves there and 5% on the other side. Okay, so let's try one more. Uh, it says red, the red blood cell counts uh, in millions of cells per microliter for a population of adult males can appro be approximated by a normal distribution there's a mean of 5.5 million cells per microliter and a standard deviation of 0 0.4. Uh, what is the minimum red blood cell count that can be in the top 21% of counts? Okay, now that uh, in concept is the same kind of question as the one I just did, but this top 21%, uh, it sounds a little bit different. So the 95th percentile is the number where 95% of the data is less than that number. Um, and But on the other hand, to be in the top 21%, that means that you're such that your number uh, has is within the range to have 21% of the data uh, above it, okay? So like there's some minimum number right here where 21% of the data is above it. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, and that means 79% is below it. I mean, there's 100% of area under the curve. That's all of it. Wherever you divide it up, it must add up to 100%. So you could say it in those two ways. You could say there's this number where 21% of the curve is above it or 21% of the data is above it. That's the top 21%. But alternately, 79% has got to be less than that. Okay, all right. Well, so... Uh, yeah, well, I guess once we have that sorted out, we can answer it in this question in the same way, right? Uh, I just need to look at a normal distribution with a mean of 5.5 and a standard deviation of 0.4, okay? So well, let's see, mean of 5.5, standard deviation 0 0.4, and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so it looks like this, and I wanted to find... Uh, the point that had an area of 0 0.79 to its left or 79% of the area uh, to its left. Okay, so if I put 0 0.79 here. That's the area, that's the probability, and this number will turn out to be the value on the horizontal axis. So there it is. So it looks like, I mean, if I'm if I didn't see these numbers, I'd say it looks maybe it's like 5.7 or 5.8. That would be in the top 21%. But down here, we get the exact number, 5.82. Okay, so uh, the minimum 5.82 million cells per microliter. That's what we need to be in the top 21%. Okay, so yeah, so in that number, like 21% of the data would be more than that. And 79% would be less than that, all adding up to 100%. Okay, now, I hope then that we see that at least with this, uh, it's not like we're learning something brand new. Of course, sometimes we learn things brand new, like starting from scratch, and that can be difficult when you learn something new. But this time, I just it's, it's like what we already know, we're just going the other way, okay? going backwards. We're still using the normal distribution. We're still using stat crunch to find all of our numbers. Um, and, you know, if you can see it is just going backwards from something you already know how to do forwards, that will probably make it easier.